one of the things that we wanted to do tonight, in addition to giving you kind of a broad overview of um, what the three divisions that are highlighted tonight are offering, is to put the spotlight on one of our very special programs that's a relatively new one, but that has been growing and doing amazing work at the university, and that is the Graduate Program in International Affairs. And to do that, I'm delighted to introduce Michael Cohn, who is the director of that program. Michael has a PhD from the University of Chicago and um, works as advisor to the Dean of Faculty of Architecture, Design, and, Ur and Urban Planning of the University of Buenos Aires also. And before coming to the New School in 2001, he was a vi visiting fellow of the International Center for Advanced Studies at NYU and spent a very long time in his career from 1972 to 1999 at the World Bank. He has um, been responsible for a great deal of urban policy development at the bank during that period and um, has worked in over 50 countries and was very heavily involved in the bank's work on infrastructure, environment, and sustainable development. He's a member of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences panel on urban dynamics and is the author of several books. Um, and last time I spoke with Mike, he was writing several more at the same time. So unbelievably engaged, always traveling, very committed to students, and doing unbelievably dynamic stuff at GPIA. So without further ado, Mike, it's really great to have you here tonight. Thanks very much, Lisa. It's a real pleasure to see everybody here tonight and to, to follow my, my colleagues uh, in their comments about, about the university. I want to talk about three things this evening. First, the condition we're in worldwide. Secondly, why you at this point should be considering graduate school and what it means to come to the new school. And thirdly, what we actually do in the new school. And I want to do it by a combination of talking about some big ideas and also talking, telling you some stories about specific people who've come through the doors and have gone out and are out there struggling in the world. Because I think it's not that you're just coming to school to go to school at this point, but you're thinking about what's going to happen afterwards. And frankly, to make a decision tonight or to make a decision in these next few weeks about whether you're going to go to graduate school and make the financial and intellectual and emotional commitment to do that, it's really serious business. It's really serious. And we respect that's the seriousness of your questioning, and we want to respond in the, in the, same, in the same way. The first thing, I think it's, it's kind of ironic in some way, we're, we're in, uh, in, uh, in this building, and as I walked in uh, with Linda and we saw the, the letters Bloomberg here, I was saying to myself, well, I guess this building is still standing, uh, but a lot of other buildings are sort of barely standing. And I think th the point here is that as we read the papers and we, we see what's going on, um, this is a moment, as Michael Schober suggested, that there are more questions open than almost ever before. That the notions of the economic system, the political system, ethics, social justice, sustainability, the relationship to the natural world, they're all open questions. Are people of my generation, people who grew up in the 60s and fought in the battles of the 60s, we can't, we didn't come up with the answers. In fact, it's really, it's really up to your generation to work through these questions and to figure out what makes sense to you. And in order to do that, I think one of the most important parts of this process is that you have to be in an intellectual environment which combines theory and practice which is rigorous in laws of evidence, in understanding, in understanding what, what rigor and method means in all the respective disciplines, but being able to come up with questions which can kind of answer what I used to say were sort of my grandmother's question, the so what question. So what does it mean? Right? What, are the, what, are the, the, what are the answers in the, for the economy, for, in sociology, in environmental studies, in, in in many important, many important areas of, of concern. Tomorrow there happens to be a little meeting going on on the other side of the Atlantic. Uh, they say that 80% uh, of the world's economy is uh, represented in, the, in that meeting tomorrow. And I think it's fair to say that they have a lot of questions that they're not going to resolve tomorrow. And I think the issue here is how you can be in an academic environment for a limited period of time when you're challenged to ask those questions and really to, to try to engage with them. I want to tell you a couple of quick stories. Two weeks ago, 
I was in Buenos Aires, and I went to see one of our former faculty members. He happens to be a graduate of the New School for Social Research Economic Department, Economics Department. His name is Martina Bellis, and Martin is now the Deputy Minister of the Economy of Argentina. And we were talking about what he was facing in managing the economy. He had just come back from London for the preparations of the G20. And we were talking about the difficulties of that. And I couldn't, uh, couldn't help myself. You know, as a proud former colleague, I said to him, well, how uh, did the new school affect the way you, you operated in London last week? And he said, yeah, but you know what else? I discovered that my counterpart in Brazil, the Under Secretary for Economic Policy, also went to the new school. Right? And we're also thinking about rigor, and we're thinking about evidence. So there's all these proposals around, and we're saying, so, so where do they come from? And how, how solid are they? And, and how, do, how actionable are they? Well, that was interesting. I walked out of his office, and I went up and pick up, picked up a newspaper. This is a true story. True story, I promise you. Picked up a newspaper. There's an investigation going on in Argentina of lawyers who defended the military, who, are, who defended the military during the military period, and now are defending people who were charged with human rights crimes. And as I was reading the, the story, it turned out that there is a woman who is leading this study from New York. And I look at the name, and it's one of our graduates. It's one of the graduates from the GPIA who has had, a, had an impact now in Argentina on the question of human rights. Right? She went to the International Center for Transitional Justice after she graduated, and I was feeling good. Well, we're, we're connecting. Then I opened up another newspaper, and there's a full-page picture of Anwar Sheikh, who's a professor of economics from the New School for Social Research, right there. So within a period of about a half hour, the New School was in Argentina. There was no question about that. <laughs> it was zap, you know? We were there. We were present. It was a Thursday. The next day, I got a call from their equivalent of the White House, the Casa Rosada. And they said, the former director of cabinet of Argentina will be in New York next week, and he'd like to come to the new school. I said, well, why is that? He said, well, he thinks that he can learn something and have an interesting debate. So last Monday, this high cabinet official was, was sitting in our offices and talking with students about what he thought the problems were and asking for reactions to students, asking for the reactions from the students. One of the things that came out of this is we said, we ought to have a, have a series of meetings to talk about what would be a new economic framework and a new political framework going forward. This is all within a short period of time, but we are present. We are engaged with these questions, which are compelling now. And I just want to suggest to you that part of your coming to, to our university is also a way to be, be, to be so engaged. A couple of stories. Seven years ago, a young man came into, the, into my office. He had a southern drawl. He said, I went to the University of Alabama, and I work on a, for a Brazilian shipping company in the Port of New York. I'm the guy who brings the containers in, and he goes like this. Right? And he said, I've never studied economics or social science, but I believe that my knowledge of logistics could be useful in humanitarian crises. I want to know something about the practical skills I would need to work on humanitarian disasters. We brought him in. He had economics. He did a thesis on the famine in Ethiopia. We sent him to Turkey to work on earthquake reconstruction. We sent him to India to work with a women's NGO, also on earthquake reconstruction. And now he's working on Darfur and, and on Ethiopia, working for USAID in the, in the area of disaster reduction. And I met his sister on the street a couple of weeks ago, just by chance. And she came up to me and she, she said, you know, you changed his life. And the reality is, with that, with that individual, we changed his life. And he is now changing his life and changing other people. So he's met, others, he's met other, other people and brought, brought them into the program. We had a student who, came to the, who graduated from Brown. She came to, uh, came to New York, worked in a social service agency for, for five years. She, she described herself as, I'm a jeans and sandals person. She said, I'm a communities, community person. I'm interested in hands-on solve, problem solving. From our program, we sent her to Uganda to work in a women's cooperative that was working, producing tea and, and, and honey and organizing for the free trade movement. She came back, and she was feeling good. She had a good experience. And I looked at her, and I said, that was easy, huh? 
You know, yeah, I can do that. I know how to do that. So what would happen if you tried something hard? What would be hard for you? Kind of counterintuitive to who you think you are. I said, have you ever worn a suit? No, no, no. Well, I, don't, I don't wear suits. No. Could you imagine working in a big institution? Could you imagine working on policy? She thought about it. She came back the next week. We sent her to Argentina to work in the Ministry of the Economy with another minister. And in fact, she became a policy person. She came back, and I said, so who do you want to be? You you're obviously can be a community person. You know how to do that. You, now you've seen policy. You've understood some of these problems. But who do you want to be? What, what it feels right? We happened to be having a, uh, a talk by, by the director of social development from the World Bank. And the, one of the things this guy said was, we don't know how to do social assessment of the impacts of our projects very well. So at the end of this, the end of this meeting, she came up to me and she said, I can do that. That's something I think I can do. Right? I think that we need people who are not the economists who always believe that we have all the answers, but rather somebody who can think about sensitivity and culture and social process and participatory process and engage with that. Now she's doing social assessment in the Congo for the World Bank. Right? The point is, somebody comes in, we're interested in what they do, how they do it, and how we can get them out in, into the world in a serious way. I think that the, one of the things about the New School is that we're able to work with individuals. Somebody said, what, what are your office hours? And I, frankly, they're 24-7. They're 24-7. I don't remember how many emails uh, Phil and I and Mark, Mark uh, answered last weekend, but it, it felt like it was going on all the time. If you decide that you want to go to graduate school now, you're not going to wait for three weeks to see a faculty member, right, to go and have a conversation about it. You need to have, it's not a dentist appointment in New York, right? It's got to be something that you're going to do immediately, and you can have access to people. And that's where I think we're really different. Somebody told me, I, I don't know, that they said that there's some other big school other, up some other part of town. I don't know about them, but I do know about us. And what I know is that if you come in the doors in the new school, you'll actually meet real people. They'll know your name. They'll know what you're doing. And they'll want to know what we can do to help you make it, do it better. And we can also help you deal with the question, what are the questions that are on your mind? A final story. We had a student from Milano come into our program, come to, come to a number of our courses. And she heard somebody talking about projects. She had gone to the Peace Corps in Morocco, and she heard some discussion about development projects. And the conversation was going on. So at the end of the class, she came up to me and she said, so what happened to that project? This was something that had gone on in the 1970s. I said, well, the truth is I don't know. I haven't been back to, to Senegal since, since the 80s. She said, well, I want to go. I want to go find out what happened. It's compelling to me. So she went out and organized seven other women students in our program. And they went to Senegal for two months in 2006 and lived in the neighborhood, a housing and water where it had been a housing and water supply project, and came back and did an evaluation of what they found. It turned out it's the only evaluation that's ever been done for these international agencies of looking at something 35 years later. So the students went down to Washington. They went into the World Bank. They went into the UNDP. They talked about what they did. When I asked this woman, this student, Milano student, at the time she still hadn't graduated from Milano, I said, well, you demonstrated leadership skill skills and policy analyst analysis skills, but you had confidence. I mean, what a thing to pull off, that you said you're going to just go and do it. Right? And she said, well, I got that. I got that from the Milano faculty, from asking questions, from getting positive feedback, and they were really engaged, and she was really engaged. She's now working in Mali. Right? So she's an example also of somebody going across the boundaries between Milano and, and our division and working and, and turning theory into practice and, and trying to have an impact on the world. My feeling is that at this point, in terms of an academic institution, we're not so big as you as as to be impersonal. We're small enough to be caring and safe for individuals. I don't believe there's anything as a stupid question in our program. If if somebody has an idea, has a question on their mind, there's somebody else in the room who's got the same question. 
right? And they ought to be, we ought to discuss it. We ought to try things out. We ought to be courageous. We ought to try things that are hard. And it's only in doing that that we are actually, we're going to build our own muscles, whether they're intellectual muscles or muscles in terms of courage, to try to do things that matter. So part of, part of this is not just an academic message. I think, it's a, I think it's a very personal message, almost an existential message, about trying to engage in a place that's interested in you as an individual. We're not talking about masses of people, although I must say I'm a little intimidated by everybody here tonight. Right? But I think, because our classes are no more than 20 in a class. Right? Because if you're going to speak up, you know, you, you're not going to have, have that. So. Um, I just want to, again, uh, welcome everybody here and to hope that you'll, you'll think seriously about the New School as an institution. Um, I think it's an engaged place. I think it's a very serious place. I think it's serious because it believes that there's a relationship between theory and practice and there's also something called social responsibility and that social responsibility and political responsibility matter and that that's part of what we do and if we're going to study at this point in our lives, We've got to connect all of those things. So thank you very much.